that makes a difference if you can reach people in their own language. And people were grateful that I made this effort. Normally I'm not into efforting at all. <laughs> Hi, Akos. Hi. Um, my name is Baba, and um, I started listening to you, I think, uh, a year ago. During the pandemic, thanks a lot to my partner who introduced me to you. Um, I have a three-dimensional question for you, sir. Um, as a technologist, I come from uh, this experience of creating virtual worlds. And <laughs> and I would say uh, there's some good news. The good news there, both as a producer and a consumer, is there's a lot of suffering there. So, and as you always say, suffering is the foundation to consciousness. So, hopefully, hopefully we'll find a solution there. Uh, on a serious note, the three question, the three dimensional question I have for you is, uh, in regards to language, um, how has the understanding of multiple? I don't know if you've addressed this in the past. But just listening to you speak, it seems you have a grasp or a decent grasp of multiple languages. Um, how has your understanding of multiple languages enabled you to get access to um, wisdom in the, in the conscious dimension and communicate that in accessible ways? So that's the first one. Uh, then the second one is um, pushing wanting to explore your mind around digital media. So I don't know whether you've experienced digital media or whether you spend much time on there, uh, but if you were to explore your mind and talk about how you would design social media in conscious ways, what would you um, recommend there? Because I, I literally quit my job to live in my car to explore some of these ideas. Uh, because yeah, I, I think as the pandemic showed me, um, it's important we solve this problem and uh, exploring your mind would give me some insights. Then the final one is the power of now. And it's, uh, I come from a different community whereby thoughts like yours was inaccessible to me and I feel like it was a language barrier. And um, I would like to work with you and your team to help uh, make the power of now accessible in major African languages uh, because I uh, because it has really in my own personal journey first of all being able to like I've grown up speaking English and being able to access your perspective. I grew up Christian, but being able to access your perspective opened my mind to another um, dimension. And I was able to heal my deep, like Kim says, laundry. Like there's a bunch of laundry I was able to heal. Uh, but after healing my laundry, I came to the realization that, okay, there are a bunch of this amazing things I want to communicate with my parents, but I really can't because I speak English to them. English is not their first language. It's like speaking of unconsciousness, slavery and colonization. It's like a second, third language for them. And so there are some things that are not accessible. But the weird thing is I started learning my native language and there's some weird thing that started going on. It's like the same thoughts you were saying is actually accessible in other languages that already exist. And I'm like, oh my God. And I started speaking my language to my parents and it's bringing so much peace to them. And it's like, what you're saying is actually true. Like ancient wisdom and ancient civilization, like those things are real. <laughs> so uh, I would love to work with you and your team to make this accessible. So please, languages, digital media and power. <laughs> So 
Thank you. Wonderful uh, uh, proposal, and uh, the, the, I, that p will help m perhaps millions of people. Um, uh, however, I must confess that uh, I have forgotten your first question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your understanding of uh, several languages, does that help in accessing uh, wisdom from the conscious dimension and does that help in uh, communicating that in accessible ways? Right. Well, um, just uh, when was it? Three weeks ago, um, we had a retreat in Mexico and uh, for the first time ever, I, I, I wanted to challenge myself and uh, decided to do the entire retreat in Spanish. And, uh, <laughs> and that was, uh, I learned Spanish a long time ago, over half a century ago, and haven't used it very much since, reading, occasionally reading a book. Uh, and I experienced the, uh, at, in, uh, at first it was very hard for my mind to uh, find the words that, were, that there's, no, there's an intuition that comes before, well, bef before you speak, it's very hard to, to describe, before language happens, you already know what wants to be said at a non-verbal level, and then this knowing what wants to be said, which is a non-conceptual knowing, then it gets translated into concepts and words. And with a very, in English they say your, your, your language is rusty. When you, if you haven't used a language for a long time, you say it's rusty. And it's, that's how I experienced it. The, the impulse came to say something, and sometimes the flow was there, it was fine. And then, so, can't find the right word. Immediately, the mind has to work overtime to find an equivalent or similar word. And it slows you down a bit, but that was fine. So I was able to reach, and after a couple of days, the flow came back and it went much more easily. Quite enjoyable, reaching people in their own language. That makes a difference if you can reach people in their own language rather than have it translated into their language. This is why I wanted to do it. So I, I was able to, and people were grateful that I made this effort. Normally I'm not into efforting at all. <laughs> but it, I made an effort to speak Spanish and it, it worked. Um, and that was good. Uh, similar thing in Germany years ago. I. Um, so out of touch with the German language that I spoke uh, as a child, uh, and I said, I cannot possibly, that was 20 years ago, I said, I cannot possibly give a talk in German, it's just, the words are not there anymore. And at the first event, I had a translator, I spoke English, and the translator, interpreter, interpreted into German. It um, didn't feel quite right, and I, a few times I, I knew the translator was, was, wasn't correct, but I couldn't, <laughs> uh, but I couldn't say anything. Um, and at the second talk, the organizer said, why don't you tell, tell your aunt, just say a few words in German and explain to them why you are not going to speak German. <laughs> and that, that's a good idea, so I started and I talked, the reason why I'm not going to speak in German, I said in German, the reason why I cannot speak in German to you because I haven't used the language in 60 years or whatever. And so, and then I continued along and talked and talked and talked. And 15 minutes later I said, oh, I'm still speaking German. <laughs> and then they continued. Um, 
translation was unnecessary. The flow was there. It was a miracle. <laughs> and, and so after that, I've always, when I go to Germany, Switzerland, I, I sp speak in German now. That's good. But the language is a strange thing. Um, it's, of course, it's an, it's an abstraction. Language, I use language to teach. And uh, the, the words that one uses uh, in spiritual um, discourse, the, the words uh, have a different function from the function that, that words have in ordinary discourse. In spiritual discourse, the, the words are, are not the thing. They, are on, they only point to the thing. They, all the words are point us to something that is beyond words. So are using words in order to point something that is beyond the words. Even when I say stillness, the word stillness isn't stillness. So it's a, it's a pointer when I say um, uh, to, 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 uh, the awakening, spiritual awakening, presence, uh, whatever it may be, they're all, they're all just pointers. They're not, not something to believe in. It's not, you cannot learn the terminology of spirituality and then believe because you have mastered the words that are used in a spiritual teaching, <laughs> then you have mastered the spiritual teaching. In ordinary um, subjects, this is how it works. You learn, you learn the words and in exams you regurgitate what you have learned. You write it all down and you pass your exam. And so to learn the words is you, you become proficient. In spiritual discourse, if you learn the words, you might become proficient in spiritual discourse, but it hasn't done anything to your state of consciousness. There are actually people around these days <laughs> um, <laughs> who, who give uh, talks, spiritual talks, I've seen a few on YouTube, um, who have mastered spiritual discourse, especially in the area of what in in India, India is called um, Advaita, Advaita Vedanta, people who have mastered the terminology of Advaita, and they can beautifully explain that whatever you say to them is, yeah, that's obviously, it's all delusion, of course, it's all totally delusion, it's all, uh, everything is denied, it's very easy to, to make sense, apparently, but it doesn't make sense at all. And you can see it hasn't done anything in, to the state of consciousness, but they have mastered the terminology. So the language, language has a different function in spiritual discourse. And so that's, I don't know whether that has anything to do with the answer to your question, but um, that's, what, that's what came to me um, when you talk to your parents. Did, did you talk to your parents? Do you speak English to your parents? Growing up, I did, um, but I always felt they didn't really understand me. But when I started, like, because it's the same thing you're saying. So, because I'm still not fluent in my native language, so I go through the exact same process. There's a pause. You're searching for the word. Right. And then the word just flows through you. Yes. And there's a silence from them to show that they... Like, in English, it's like a debate. The conversation feels like a debate. But when I speak in their language, there's a silence, a pause, and an acknowledgement, and a... Hmm. Very good. That's good. Very good. That's wonderful, because this is means, because you haven't quite mastered the language, uh, the, the communication is not totally obscured by concepts. There are... Gap, gaps in the concepts, and this is why you can actually communicate better that way, all, although you are not proficient at the language, that's act, actually a plus, especially when you communicate something even remotely connected to spirituality. That's a, it's a great, you're lucky. Uh, that rem I don't know whether Kim has mentioned to you, it reminds me of Kim's, I don't think it's a secret, she has spoken about it before. Uh, uh, Kim has a very good relationship with her mother. Her mother is 99 years old, still very active mind, very also physically good. Uh, 
but Kim as a child, because she, she was a minority in her at school at that time, there were very few Asian people, uh, she decided when she was six or so, she, or seven, she didn't want to speak Chinese anymore, not speaking Chinese, because she did, she wanted to fit in with the others. So she refused to speak Chinese, so she lost most of her Chinese completely. As a result now, communication with her mother is virtually impossible, except for very elementary things, and her relationship is wonderful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no problem arises any, ever, ever. <laughs> uh, so that's a big, a big plus, and yours is not quite as extreme, but it's uh, similar. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, exploring your mind, have you, do you have thoughts on how social media, digital media, can result in more consciousness? Um, I think this is going to help technologies like me design right, things right, for the right, next generation. Right. Well, I am not an uh, expert on... Uh, I'm a, That's why you're the right person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not only not an expert, I am computer, almost computer illiterate, but um, I'm observing things. I know how these things function, how they work. Um, I don't have a, a, a creative solution uh, as such. I do know that a few things that, that appear in, in the virtual world are actually helpful. They, they are apps that can teach you to meditate or to breathe consciously, to bring you back into the present moment. Um, also, there are talks by Eckhart on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, 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 <laughs> I was uh, not long ago. I was going for a walk, and uh, you know that people have di different conceptual identities. One of my conceptual identities is I'm a writer. When people ask me, I usually say I'm a writer. Or if I don't want any further questions from them, I will say I'm retired. <laughs> which is not a lie because I've been retired for many decades uh, in a deeper sense. Uh, so I'm a spiritual teacher. I'd rarely say I'm a spiritual teacher because I'm not a spiritual teacher except in the moment where I, when spiritual teaching happens. I don't ca carry around with me a conceptual identity in my head. I am a spiritual teacher. Uh, 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 I'm an author, I suppose it's okay. Anyway, I was walking, a man, young man was coming with his partner opposite direction, and the man stopped and he looked at me and said, I know you from somewhere. Uh, so, uh, what's your name? I said Eckhart. Oh, so you, I watched you, I read you on YouTube all the time. And then he said to his girlfriend, look, this guy's a famous YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> And then I realized I have a new identity now. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes the, the, um, the virtual world is used for good purposes. Uh, this is not the only example, of course. Um, but there is an inherent danger in uh, the, the medium itself. That's the, it's hard to describe even a simple thing, when I occasionally read, I love books, the physical presence of books, but sometimes when I travel, um, I have things on my iPad or uh, virtual books, because books are heavy otherwise. It is not quite the same to have the experience of reading on a screen as to have the experience of the book up. I find it hard to describe what the difference is. It's almost as if I was uh, um, leaking energy when I'm, when I'm engaging with a screen. It, I have sometimes the feeling there's an energy leakage, that energy pours out, it's kind of the screen sucks it out. Uh, 
and perhaps it, to some extent, it, this happens to everybody, I think, because the energy is directed onto that screen, and energy, the uh, attention is energy, so th there's an outflow of attention onto there. And so I don't know what the screen does with it. Uh, here we have a ni nice idea for a science fiction movie <laughs> that, uh, that the, the screens are sucking up human energy. <laughs> it's the matrix. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I don't know if I finished, probably not. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, uh, somehow, to, uh, uh, nobody can control what people pu put out there. There's nothing you can do about that. If people are very unconscious, the, what they communicate will re re reflect their state of unconsciousness. Uh, so there is not much you can do to, to censor people becomes problematic, although obviously there are already laws against uh, threat, threats of physical violence or slander and things like that, then to, to in, a, in an ideal world one would say, oh, let, let's only allow polite and nice messages to come through. Anything other we need to censor, that would not be the right way to go. But I have no solution. Uh, except to encourage you to apply your presence that is already there and apply it so, you, you, so that you have creative insights into what is possible. Use the presence instead of looking to me for an answer because it appears that I don't have one. <laughs> uh, instead of looking to me for an answer, uh, look to uh, go into that stillness, that presence, and see what arises, because creative solutions, creative answers ca come from there. So to trust yourself, not the personal, superficial self, but trust the, uh, in the depth of your being, where intuition resides, the, the source of all creativity, become present, become still, direct your attention, have a, have a question, what, what you want, a creative answer to, to allow the virtual world to become a helpful tool in the development of human consciousness. So whatever your purpose is, you direct it. And then you become, you become still. You ask the question. The question is, you let go of the question. It drops into the stillness. This, this applies to any creative solution that, you're, that you may need. You ask a question, and then you become still. And perhaps not immediately, perhaps after several days, weeks, or months, uh, an answer rises and repeat that process several times. Ask a question, so you, you focus, and then be, be happy with not finding, not having an answer. Allow the answer to c come up. So what you're asking, the question you're asking me is the, what you should, should be asking yourself. You will, you will find a creative solution to that. I, I can sense that uh, that will happen. So, uh, and you're the African uh, languages reaching people in their own African language is a wonderful idea, so please connect with us so, so we can pursue that.